Well, uh, just another Saturday. I uh, kind of rigged out the, the way the frame's going to look on the front here, and I didn't, I didn't really like how short the radius rods was going to be. That's these. Uh, these are A model radius rods, so the later model cars had longer ones, so I thought I'd go down to Bassett, Virginia. There's an old junkyard down there, but they've been crushing stuff, been crushing quite a few things, and uh, but still there's a few old things down there. So I picked up a couple 37 to 41 axles and spindles too. They had quite a few of those still left. Uh, matter of fact, I'm just walking through the woods, and there here here lays a whole rig. This here, somebody had already taken this one out. There's the longer radius rods, and. Uh, Let's see if I can get a shot of the spindles here. They're the round spindles. They come off a of 30, 37 to 41. Right here might be a better one here. You can kind of see it. Now, I really, uh, my kingpins and stuff I bought were for the more, the square, the square type spindles, and I think they're like 42 to 48. But uh, these will work. So that wasn't too bad. I picked up two sets, took all day. So now I have the longer radius rods, they're about 10 inches longer. And I got the spindles I need. Well, that's exactly what I wanted to do right there. Uh, what I, anyways, if you're wondering why I was beating this, uh, Dad, we're working on his little roadster, whatever you want to call it. We really don't have a name for it yet, since we're building it. But uh, he's got, he needed some spindles for it, and what he had, or what we were already using, were some old 32 spindles, which they don't make anything for. And so right now, he went out to the junkyard and he bought a whole bunch of parts, pretty cheap. Cost a whole bunch of, he, I don't know how much they cost. He said he didn't want to buy them online because they were all too much. So he bought these for like 50 bucks, and I can see why, you know, they're rough sitting filthy dirty, but anyways, these are 37 to 41 uh, spindles, and that's what we're going to use. The other ones are square, and that's not what he was wanting, so. Um, so what we had to do, we had to take a torch and burn off some of the nuts or, and bolts, and we got this side off, now we got to get that side, and this came off easier, I didn't think it was coming off. But it did, so it worked out. Well, this side's not coming off, I don't think. Now, what we gotta do now is we gotta take out the kingpin. It's this part right here, on right here. And what it does is that's where it's, it's like the, the point of rotation where the wheel turns and everything. That's what, that's where your turn in is done. And it this pretty much just locks everything in. It's kind of like uh, modern day ball joints on a car. And uh, even some trucks have it today like Fords. Some some of the uh, Fords might still have this kind of setup. But it's not, I mean this is kind of old and outdated. Now they got that ball joint kind of setup. So uh, we're gonna take this out. We already took out the lock. The lock holds this Makes it hold the holds the kingpin in place. Make sure it doesn't bounce out of it or anything like that. So uh, we're gonna, probably going to try to put it in the press and then just try to press that out. So all right. Now what we're doing now is we're heating all the metal around it, the kingpin, because when metal heated, it expands, gets bigger. So we're hoping that when we do this. We'll, once we heat it up hot enough, we'll just be able to beat it and uh, knock it out. But if this doesn't work, we'll have to go and uh, use the press to push this out. All right, it looks like we'll probably have to press this out. All right, well, what we just did right now, Dad 
didn't have the camera on. I don't know what he was doing, goofing around, something. Playing, probably playing with the music. I don't know. But uh, what we just did was just heated up all these those bolts. And uh, I don't know if I told you we were going to heat those up. We were talking about the kingpin earlier. Uh, these are spring purchases. And uh, we had to get these off because Dad wants to use these radius rods rather than the ones he's already got over there. These are a little bit longer. So he wants to put use them to... It'll go down the trip car more, a little look a little bit more kind of like proportion. But um, what we had to do, we just heated those up, actually ate through those bolts, and we took the air hammer here and just kind of chiseled our way around. And uh, finally, that one came out, and we got that pin out. Now we got to do it to the other side, and uh, I think it, we tried it, and it was giving us some trouble, so I guess we'll go back to it. Well, that only took like half an hour or plus of twisting, heating, beating, air tools, twisting, some more beating, and a little more twisting, and a, a bunch more beating after that. It was, that was a long thing to get out. But, uh, well, there we go. We got that. The radius rods will come on off, and, um... I don't know if we're still going to leave yet. It's about 10 o'clock at night here, and, and Dad still wants to get those, these dumb kingpins out. So I guess we're going to have to push press those out, and then we can go home and get some dinner or something. Okay, I don't well, like uh, Kenny Four said, that uh, I didn't like the, uh, the length of the radius rods. So on this later model front end we got, uh, they're like 8 inches longer. So. Uh, I'm trimming them down. You can see right here. I'm trimming it down here. Let's see. Usually that works. Okay, I'm trimming it down here. And I'm going to round it off like this one. Now, originally, like that picture I just showed you a minute ago, the hat, the spring perch was like this. There you go. What it held the spring, it held the spring in front of the axle. So of course this this rig's gonna have the spring right over top of the axle. So we can cut that off and round it out to make it look pretty. So that's what we're gonna do right now. between a uh, an A model uh, radius rod and a uh, 35 to 48. 48 uh, is it what is it? It's, it's 47 to 48, 45 through 48, 46 through 48. Anyway, those are the longest radius rods. But anyway, here's the difference. I've got them laying right on top of each other kind of where they would be and you can see the one that's got the spring perch in it right there is thicker and heavier uh, but more importantly longer and I think that's really going to make it look better 
So uh, that's that. Working on these radius rods because I wanted longer radius rods than those A models. Uh, and that's what the radius rod is. Uh, they call them wishbones. Kind of cause it's shaped like a wishbone. Now, when I took when I took this one off the car, we couldn't get the ball unbolted. The ball looks like that. And it should fit, you see, like that. So we just cut it off. So uh on this set. On the other set I went ahead and cut them off right there at the ball and on those A models the castings was kind of thick and I could actually drill and tap them but on this one, on these, uh, it wasn't too thick and actually I cut it all out. It was only like an eighth inch thick there so I had my buddy Jack cut me up. Uh, he turned some down on a lathe called buns I think. I probably isn't saying it right. But uh, they're tapped and they're tapered to, uh, to slide in there. Actually, they're real tight fit. And what I'm doing now, I'm going to drill a hole here. So once that gets slid in, I can uh, I'll butt weld it. I'll weld down in there and that'll make it a lot stronger. And then I'll weld all the way around, around it when I'm finished. Now, I've already done one. So I'll show you what it looks like. Uh, right there is where I welded, you know, I butt welded it and welded, I plug welded it rather, and welded it all the way around. I'm just going to leave it raw like that. I'm not going to grind it and clean it up because this is a rat rod. So, you know, things like that looks kind of cool on it. So that's what I'm doing now. Okay, I've drilled, I've drilled the holes and I went ahead and slotted it uh, since the bun's a little wider than the the tube and that way it can stretch and I'll weld that slot up it'll be okay actually I'll try to weld all the way into that slot to the bun now uh, when I drive this in I'm gonna stick a bolt in it this fits kind of loosely in it so I don't mess up the threads so we'll try to drive it in now you can see how much bigger it is Well, uh, I got about as much done on the front of this thing as I can do uh, because I ordered the wrong spring. My spring that I ordered was 29 inches eye to eye and I need 31 I think it was so I've got to send that back so I decided to work on something else here and what I'm working on now is my pedal assembly this is going to be a straight drive four speed and uh, and of course brakes so I didn't want to put the pedals a lot of times they hang the pedals down from under the the dash but when you do that I uh, usually have things on the firewall and I want to keep my firewall clean so I'm going to bring pedals the old way up under the frame they'll come up under the floor and, and stick up through the floor so I've already started making like my pedal my pedal stands I gotta put some pedals on it but these are stick up out of the floor like that and uh, I'll tell you a secret uh, if you go online and look at advanced store online you can search all kinds of parts and uh, and a lot of times these parts fit other cars and it even tells you what cars they fit but if you look for those other cars not those so popular cars for those same parts you can really get a uh, a cheap price I mean it'll be a cheaper price like I got a Corvette ma master cylinder here and it was only seventeen dollars and uh, the slave cylinder I'm going to use is a uh, off a of Jeep Cherokee, but that was a little more expensive, like 50 bucks. So anyway, uh, what I'm doing now, I'm cutting a plate here for my master cylinder to bolt to and my slave cylinder, and then I'll hang my pedals off that. So just keep
keep you up to date what's going on now. And when I get a little more done, I'll, I'll show it to you. Well, uh, when me and Kenny was building the Ford Ranger, the four-wheel drive, uh, the guy gave us a parts truck at the same time. So I haven't went over there to get it. So uh, during this rat rod project I'm doing, I'm, I need the spider gears out of a Ford Ranger rear end. So this weekend I went over and got the truck, and it's a piece of junk, but uh, there it is. It's full of a bunch of stuff, but there's the rear end I need. That's the whole purpose of this, was to get, just to get those spider gears out of there. So there's a few other things I might salvage, since I've got a Ford Ranger too. Uh, I bought it new and I still have it. So I might salvage that door and maybe the glass. And uh, this may have a five-speed transmission in it, so I'm going to pull that out here in a minute. And, uh, and we'll use it on the rat rod on the 29 Nash. But uh, that's where we stand now. I'll take some pictures of this when I start getting to the rear end. I'm just going to clean all this junk out now, sort through it, and see what we got. Okay. Well, uh, another day working on this truck. Uh, got Glenn Hawkins to help me. He's back there beating in a fan and uh, taking, trying to get that rear end out. So uh, I was kind of leery about getting Glenn because everybody he helps gets hurt. So I don't know if you get this down. Let's see. Let's keep getting an eye on him here. Just get this over here. Gee. Anyway, I guess we'll get it done. Then we're gonna haul it on the crate over to the scrap yard. Well, I meant to uh, take more shots of us getting the rear end out of that truck and things, but uh, I got carried away. Anyway, we got the truck on the on the trailer. The trailer's too little. Ben thinks the trailer's too little. Not but stay. The trailer's just too little. It's just sticking out for a foot. It'll be okay, won't it? I don't think so. It's a small truck, but a small trailer. Man, my tires are flat, man. No, they're doing well. They will flatten out when we go to that hump, won't they? If we pull it over. Yeah. Well, I think you got it rigged on there pretty good. I don't think it's... It's too little, huh? I don't think we can get it off the trailer, man. But... Anyway, we're going to head out to uh, the scrapyard with it anyway. It's too little. Well, we made it down here to the scrap yard. Uh, yeah, the scrap iron, but everybody's at lunch. So we just got to sit here and wait. But they got some neat pictures. Scrap yards are always kind of cool. And I looked at that big pile over there and I thought, well, maybe that's a bunch of cars. You know how you see them squish them up like in a big block of motors over here. Those are all motor blocks. Hey, try not to break the glass. Well, I uh, got rid of the truck. We saw that, and I've taken the springs off this rear end. And I'm took the drums off and I'm going to start, I'm going to take the rear plate off. Now all I needed off this rear end was the spider gears for what I'm told. And uh, I might use the, uh, the backing plates for the brakes. And I might use the brakes and drums off of it also. But the axles I won't be able to use are too short. I need something longer. Uh, you can kind of see this rear end there. And there's the old banjo and it's a little bit longer. And I actually want the, I want the uh, tires to set outside the bucket. I don't want them sitting in here like this. I kind of want them sitting out wide, wide, you know, wide out, you know, wide on the bucket. Anyway, looking pretty good so far. Just mocked up there. 
Okay, let's get this cover off. Air gun really makes it sick. Okay, let me, I'll show you where the spiders are. Now that's the ring gear, and here's the spiders right down there. One on this side, one on that side. The axle, the axle actually slides inside the spider. Actually, there's four. There's one here and one there. But we want the ones with the splines right here for the, for the axle. So we'll pull that pin out, we can slide the axles out, and that'll be that. Well, uh, we broke the case apart on the old banjo rear end. And uh, what we're going to do is update it. People go, why don't you, why are you doing that, Kenny? Why don't you just leave, use it like that? Well, it's kind of hard to show now, and I might have showed it earlier. They've got a tapered shaft down here, and a hub slides on it, and it's all 1936 stuff, brakes and things like that. So to update it, what we got to do is uh, pull that apart, and I'm going to show you here. This is where the spider gears are on this one. Let me set this right here. Now the biggest thing is the spider gear is built onto the axle. It's not a splined axle like we did over here. Uh, like the old rear end we got the axle splined on the end and the spider gear fit over the spline, see? But anyway, these are the spider gears out of that Ranger rear end we need it. And if you look, they look a whole lot like the 1936 stuff. And that's what we want. So, what we've done, pull those axles out. The new spider gear fits right in there just like, like it should. So what we really need to do now is machine this hole a little bigger up to that size where that spider will ride in, in that housing. And the same thing with the ring gear. It's got to ride in there too because there's a spider gear on either side of this this housing. Let me get this other one. I'll show you. And then our axles just slide right into the spline area. So I'm real tickled on how that looks. Fits perfect. You think 19 uh, 19 what was this 85 spiders? Almost the same as 1936. So now what I've got to do is take this to a friend of mine named Larry and he's going to machine it out and also machine this out to fit that sleeve on the spiders. Then I've got to find some axles and clean up. Well I took that center section over to Mark Carter. Uh, Mark Carter has a machine shop and he's supposed to be cutting that down for me. So I started to work on this, uh, get this pinion out of here. And uh, I took the two nuts out on front and pulled the front bearing out and such. But uh, it still won't come out. So I had to go online and, and do some research. And it seems like you have to get a, a press to press this shaft out. You gotta press it out. So uh, that's what I'm gonna work on now. And then I'll sandblast it and paint it. Paint it. Uh, I did sandblast the other parts. Got the radius rod and the axle and the and the spindles and also the rear end housings. And I went ahead and put some epoxy primer on them. So uh, there they are. They look nice. I'd like to have done it all at one time, but I couldn't get the pinion out of that to clean it up. So today's Saturday. I got all day. Okay, I'm gonna show you what I got rigged up here. I've got this press I made and. Uh, I got a little socket on the shaft and then I've got a spacer here that I push the housing down. So when I pump that jack, it should uh, push this down and push the shaft out. So that's what I'm going to try to do. Now this 
coming on out. Pretty as you please. Now I need another spacer, I think. Well, there it is. It works like a charm. Pinion gear, the bearings and races. And my socket right there. Well, I, I got all the bearings out. And uh, they're all marked up. Of course, this thing's been setting. I don't know if y'all can see that or not. See those little spots? There you go. You got a good shot. Uh, this rear end's been sitting in that junkyard probably since the 40s, maybe, right? Or maybe the 50s. Even if it's the 50s, what is that? That's, 30, that's 60 years ago. So uh, I've got the bearings out and everything. And I meant to show you how to sandblast. And I kind of got in a hurry and forgot to, to film it. But uh, I sandblasted the housing and went ahead and, uh, and put my epoxy primer on it. So it's going to make it look pretty cool. And uh, now just let that dry. And I might start on the spring right now. I want to, uh, I want to reverse the eye. You know, there's a bunch of companies like credit card companies and everything out there. Uh, or your banks. When you get your card, you got a credit card or a debit card, they always try to give you these hidden fees and everything, right? Well, uh, so with this card, the good thing about it is you don't have to worry about late fees or payments. Uh, you gotta make this whatever's on there you use it and then you're done so uh, as I was filling up with gas the other day I swiped it filling up my tank and, uh, and all of a sudden it just shuts off it's not my tanks not full yet it's right under three whatever it is for gas 399 and I was wondering if if I was out of money on the card or if it would just kept counting my tank as full and it wouldn't fill it up anymore so on the back of all these cards they got a number. I call this number, find out what the balance is on my card. And uh as I called it, I'm waiting on there. It says enter the sixteen digit number, then it tells you to enter in this back number right here. Well as I was waiting on hold and everything, uh it kinda just rambled and said something real quick and then it said uh one dollar will be deducted from your balance. And uh so I thought that was kind of messed up, you know, you shouldn't have any fees or anything. But this is where it gets pretty good. As I waited on there, I waited for a uh, technician or whoever actually talked to me, not a recording, and I uh, asked him to check the balance on my card. He said I didn't have any balance. So when I was filling up for gas, I must have ran out of money and the pump known had known. That's why I quit filling it up. And that dollar they charged me didn't really charge me they charged themselves that dollar I guess because there's nothing on here so I guess I got them for a dollar if you're ever looking to pull one over on them on the credit card companies that's what you do if you're running out of money on your card you go get some gas go buy something like five bucks run it out you know only for the gift card that's all I know of and uh, so you got no money on that card, zero balance, call that number, just keep calling it. The more times you call it, the more dollars that's going to add up. 100 times, 100 dollars. They're losing that much money. And if it's just more than one person doing it, they're losing a lot more money than a dollar. Or they're not getting that dollar that every time you call, they charge you. So, uh, so this is how you pull one over on the credit card companies. You might not really be doing anything, you know, you're not really losing a dollar, but you're not really taking a dollar from them. But it kind of makes you feel better uh, because they're charging you and you're not paying. And you don't have to because there's nothing on here for them to take. So, uh, so that's how you do it, getting back at the credit card companies.